exactly this temporary visa will involve, I think is important. And then once businesses have a bit more certainty, they can start planning for the future. Okay, Stephen Clark, thank you very much. So joining us now in the studio is Nadra Ahmed, who's the chief executive of the National Care Association, which is based in Medway. Now you're here to represent the care sector. What, what are your concerns and what do you make of what you've just heard? Well, I mean, I think I agree with quite a lot of it, but I, I think um, we've got to worry about this unskilled um, terminology that's crept through because the social care sector uh, and certainly in health as well, some of those cappings are going to have a major implication. You're talking about this and it hasn't been determined White yet, paper. but there's a suggestion yeah. that there will be a salary cap for so-called skilled workers of around £30,000 a year. Yes, and, and that, that's going to have an impact on nurses, it's going to have an impact on our, our ability to recruit nurses. Some of the junior doctors don't get that sort of money, but social care, uh, where we're recruiting, which is about 18% of our um, uh, workforce is migrant workforce, we've got to look at where that workforce is going to come from if we're not able to bring them in. We, we refute the term unskilled mm -hmm. anyway, because we have a very, very skilled workforce. If you are telling me that when you're looking after people who are dying, you're not skilled, then I think we've got a real problem with, with the perceptions well, of what, what social you care want, are. Then, at this stage in the process, what would you like to hear from government? Well, I think we'd like some definitive statements um, about how we are going to tackle the issue um, if we are going to close these barriers down. If we're going to close it down, what is... Uh, what's going to happen in its place? Because actually, if we don't, if we close this down, and um, the Cavendish Coalition has done an awful lot of work on this. Um, this so the lobbying group. That yes, it is. It's, it's, the, it's, it's, um, uh, the Cavendish Coalition is a coalition of health and social care, which is uh, looking at the implications of what will happen to our workforce. If we do not address this, what will happen is social care providers will shut down. Because we, unlike what... Uh, what's just been said, if we don't have the workforce, we cannot operate. We're regulated in such a way that without the, you can give us all the money in the world, mm. but if we don't have the workforce, we're not going to be able to deliver. Okay, let's get Gordon Henderson and uh, John Howard's thoughts on this. I mean, one thing the government could do is just uh, fund an increase in, in wages for the as Nadra calls the skilled and very important workers in the social care sector. Well, I think there's an argument certainly for increasing the living wage, and I, I, I very much hope that uh, the government will, will, will go down that route. But I, I would just correct something that was said, and that is highly skilled workers, there will, there will be no cap and there will be no uh, wage limit on that. Uh, medium skilled workers um, uh, are the ones that are likely to have that 30,000 cap that people are talking about. Uh, and the lower skilled workers, and, and as Nadia you said... Do you care homes in that, in lower skilled? Well, uh, no, I, 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 I think that they do have skills. I, I, I like Nadia. I think it's wrong to say that they, they, are, they are low skills, but I'm talking about what the government's mm. likely to propose. We've got to understand that the bill's not even been presented yet, and there, but there will be legislation coming through that we will be able to debate and hopefully be able to change and tweak it to make but sure... It, it, running out, isn't it, it? It is running out, but I, I'd like to just follow through on one thing that was very said, and that's agricultural workers. Now, whether or not, uh, or when we leave the EU, whether, even if we weren't leaving the EU, we would still need to do something to help farmers, and that is introducing a new seasonal agricultural worker scheme. The government is running a pilot with 10,000 workers, but we've got to increase that number And the NFC doesn't think it's nearly enough. It's we nowhere heard in near Shelley's, enough. It's nowhere near enough. Uh, uh, John Howard, I mean, the government's clearly taking action, clearly concerned about immigration, as many of the people we heard in Ashford are. Ultimately, a lot of what's happening at the moment, Brexit itself, is, is arguably down to the, the failures to control immigration under Labour. Because we've had a fundamentally dishonest debate about migration in this country for the last 40 years. The British economy has relied on migration since the 1950s for a whole number of reasons. We've got an ageing population, the economy has done reasonably well, has created jobs, uh, there's been a lack of investment in skills and people in Britain, but substantially, very substantially, and the bit people don't like to say is that people in developed economies, not just Britain, don't like doing quite a lot of jobs that are done by migrant communities. That's true in America with Mexico, it's true in Germany with Turkey, and it's true in Britain with migration here. And a bit more investment in communities struggling to cope with migration 
and a little bit less playing to bigotry and we'd be in a better position today. Okay, everyone, we're going to have to leave it there. But Nadra Ahmed, thank you very much for joining us in the studio.